So, welcome back to the channel. My name's Sean Neverly, and in today's video, I'm going to be making a tea light holder. Most of this project is made from scrap wood, but the ends of the tea light holder are actually made from uh, scrap material from the pitch frame I just made. I had some off cuts when cutting the short sides of the pitch frame. As you can see here, I'm cutting uh, the mitres for the pitch frame. And uh, on the left, I've got that small off cut and I spent a lot of time making this kind of uh, lamination with ripple maple and paduke lipping and I just didn't want to chuck it away and I thought of what can I make with it and I came up with the idea of a tea light holder and these could be the ends and the handles. So uh, I think it's turned out really nicely and I'm really glad I can repurpose it. So as you can see there, I was just squaring up the ends and chewing it up on the table saw and it's going to come more apparent later on in how I use them within this piece. So at the moment I masked off some areas and I'm painting the insides black. Uh, I masked off the areas where I uh, wanted to glue. The cool thing about this tea light holder is it's actually filled up with sand and the candles are pressed into the sand a bit like a zen garden which is a really nice style I, I quite like. So as you can see there I painted a scrap piece of plywood and that's the base of the tea light holder and uh, I added some masking tape so if there was any squeeze out of the glue um, it didn't ruin the painted black surface. As I peeled up that masking tape, uh, the glue would come up with it. So I just glued that on with uh, some Irwin clamps overnight. And in the morning, I was able to sand the bottom and uh, paint the underneath. Now, the reason I'm painting it is purely to hide the plywood. I'm not using the nicest quality plywood. And to be honest, if I was using nicer quality, I'd probably still want to paint it because kind of darkens the underside and creates a shadow. I'm using some good quality paint uh, by Windsor & Newton and it's uh, acrylic Payne's grey. Now it's so dark it basically looks like black. It's actually in the, the bluey grey family of colour uh, but yeah it looks like black to me so I'm gonna use it. Now the legs are made from uh, Paduk and this was kind of a small off cut and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make one leg and then rip it in half. The benefit of doing it this way is it's much quicker, I just need to cut the curves once and uh, doing one leg and then ripping it allows me to get both legs exactly the same, you know, because uh, I'm basically splitting it down the middle. So I just created that arc on the bandsaw and uh, smoothing it out with a spoke shave. Now the design I wanted to go for was a kind of Japanese style, it kind of looks like a Japanese roof if you can picture that, if you know what I'm talking about. And what I'm creating now is the arcs on the underneath. Now a lot of the weight of this tea light holder is in the middle with the sand so I could have quite a small base and I still don't think this tea light holder will wobble at all. The ends are kind of raised to create handles so you can lift it up by the ends and move it wherever you like. But I kind of see this piece as a centerpiece on a table or a dining room table or a coffee table. It's to go in the middle or something. Or to be honest, it could go on a mantelpiece. It might look nice on that. So, got a lot of sanding. I sanded the whole of this tea light holder with 240 grit. And as you can see there, that's where I'm ripping it in half. And I then sanded both halves on my drum sander. Now, a drum sander is so useful because with small components like this, you can sand them to the exact same thickness and get them perfectly flat. Having small pieces like this, it would be quite dangerous to pass them through a thicknesser or a planer because they're so small they could chip out and it would just be a dangerous procedure. So a drum sander comes in really handy with uh, sanding small pieces like this, as well as uh, you know curly wood because you don't get chip out with a drum sander, so you can sand burl and figured wood without worrying about chip out or snipe. So as you can see there, I'm gluing on the legs to either side of the base. Now, I glued up one side each time. If I glued up both, then I would have the issue with um, them wobbling around and not gluing on evenly. So just doing it separately made this operation a lot easier and, and more stress-free. Now, I made the legs oversized, so then I can sand back to you know the perfect shape. And that's what you can see me doing here. I'm using a spoke shave to true up the ends. I also used a block plane to add a chamfer on all the edges and a card scraper on some of the edges where I was getting chip out with uh, a plane. And here I'm using my belt sander to true up the ends 
The grit on my belt sander I think is 120, so it is a little bit coarse. You can get much finer belts, which leave a much nicer surface so you have less hand sanding to do after. And now here I'm using a block plane to add a chamfer on the bottom. It just creates a really nice kind of shadow line when it's sitting on a table. I also added a chamfer on the side so there's no sharp edges when you pick it up and it feels really nice in the hands. And here I'm using a cabinet scraper to do the ends. Uh, it kind of really got away a lot of those sanding marks and made a perfect finish. So now it's time to add a hard wax oil. This is one of my new favorite finishes. I love the glisten it adds. It's not too glossy. It's not matte. It kind of leaves a really nice semi-gloss film. So I highly recommend it. So once that finish has dried, uh, all that's left to do is add some sand and light the candles. So, and that's pretty much the build. It's quite a simple one, but I'm really happy with how it's come out. I hope you like it and enjoy the beauty shots. Don't forget to subscribe. If you like this video, give it a like, it really helps support the channel. If you've got any questions about this build or you just want to chat, comment down below and I will reply to all your comments. And if you have any friends that would be interested in this video, please share it with them. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.